Right guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to Helion. This is a new space survival game that went into early access just today. Now I was given access to this a little early on, had a preview key from the developers at Low Gravity and so I've been playing through it, having a look at what it's all about and it does seem rather interesting to say the least. Now do keep in mind that this is early access and it is a pre-alpha version that I'm looking at right here. You can see that down in the bottom right hand corner there. So, what is this all about? Well, it's set in a full-scale star system, many thousands of light years away from our own solar system, and basically you're a survivor of an expedition gone wrong. Now, as I say, this is a full-scale star system, and added to that, it features full Newtonian physics as well as full orbital mechanics. So, this does make things a little bit tricky, it makes navigating a little bit in-depth, and it's certainly not arcadey in any type, shape or form. Everything within the game is managed through direct interaction. There's all sorts of items that you need to uh, use, and these can be used to repair or modify your ship. You can see here that the ship is in its current status. It's got 1G, there's artificial gravity here, and there's also some oxygen. Uh, the atmosphere is all working just fine. So you saw we awoke from a cryopod there, and that means we essentially start with nothing aside from what's aboard our little habitation module here. So this is basically our home base, and eventually we can build on this, expand it, and modify it. You did notice there there was a crafting option. There will be a crafting system in the game, but that's not in just yet. I've no idea how long that is going to be, but meanwhile there's plenty of other things to be getting on with around here. Now one thing that becomes immediately apparent is that the ship does need repairs, or your modules need repairs, pretty much everything. There's a distress call button here, I've never used that yet, but as it's protected it would seem that, that is something that's quite important. Down in the little carry case there, you saw some little modules, they ranged from red in colour to orange to green, and they indicate various functionality of each individual module, and you can use those to modify and repair your ship. Here for example, the air filter, there's two components that are indicated as red, and that means that they're either missing or broken, so they will need to be replaced to get the air filter online. And as we go down to the room list here, we can see that we can actually turn on and off the various power supplies to each area of our module. So, the uh, first thing we're going to need to do then is get that air filter online. Over here, you can see the life support panel. We don't actually need to do anything with that, I believe. But what we do need to do is to get the air filter working. And that's the little utility thing right over here to the right. So each little case around here does have various components that you do need to repair your ship as I've said. And you can see a few of those above this utility here. And this thing here is where the CO2 scrubbers go. And they're over here in the box that we saw earlier, these card type things. So the orange one is basically needing repair, the red one is useless, the two green ones are in full health, so I'm going to use these. It does need two of them to go in there, so that will leave me with just one that's barely functioning and another that's not functioning at all. Now this game is multiplayer, there's no single player version, there's no single player campaign either. It is a survival game and that means it's played on servers. Now unfortunately there's no local server you can set up at the moment. The only way to play the game is by the dedicated public servers provided by Zero Gravity. So you can see here that the two modules are now white, they're now repaired. So that means we can click the item here, the icon here, and power on the air filter, and power on the air generator. If we're so inclined, there's also a few other modules around here that need powering up, including power, which gives power to the lights. But we're going to move on and take a look at other things before we go and do that. But here again at the room list, you can see how we can turn these modules on and off now that they're powered. So back on the subject of servers again, Whilst uh, there's plenty provided by Zero Gravity themselves, they are going to offer the option to use your own private servers as well. And I don't know just how that's going to work, but if it works like many other survival games, then there's a good chance you're going to need to rent them from various providers. But hopefully, we may be able to set up our own server on our own computer at some point. I know that's something they've said in the past that they are looking into. So there we go then, spacesuit all outfitted. And once we go through this door, you'll notice something quite unique. We go straight to zero gravity here. And this makes things quite difficult to control, as it does follow full Newtonian physics. So moving around 
can be a bit difficult there. Now, the ideal thing here to do would be to pressurise the room or depressurise the room. And because I haven't, I simply get sucked right out into space. And there already uh, shot quite a few hundred metres away by the looks of it is the habitation model. And I'm slowly drifting backwards here, but I have activated my jetpack so I can move around. Now out here around me is, as you can see, the habitation module itself. But there is also another module out here. It's basically additional corridors. I believe we can add these to the existing module, although I haven't figured out how to do that just yet. There's also a spaceship out here. So we've got to fly over to that using our jetpack. Of course, the spaceship is a massive part of the game. It enables you to travel around the star system here, as well as do many other things, including picking up various resources that you're going to need. Now, as you can see in here, I'm using the jetpack here to orientate myself and navigate towards the airlock hatch here. And this can be a little bit difficult. I mean, you simply press move forward, for example, in one direction, and your momentum will keep going in that same direction and you'll need to counteract that in order to come to a stop. So it does take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you haven't played any Newtonian based games before. So here is the airlock and we've got to depressurize that before we open it. You can actually open it before depressurizing it, but in doing so the air inside will escape and blow you backwards into space. So the sensible approach is to depressurize the airlock, after all that's what they're all about. And as soon as that's done, we can then open the door. And you can see right in the middle there, it does say a pressure hazard on the uh, little window. Let's have a look inside the spaceship here. Now, the game is very much PvP focused. I haven't actually come across any other players yet, but that's because there's very few people playing right now. By the time you watch this video, it's likely the game will actually be released, so the servers will be much busier than they are right now. Unfortunately, there's no PvE option. I don't know if there's ever going to be, but it seems probably unlikely. But if you can get onto some private servers, then that eradicates that particular problem, if you do find it to be a problem. So here we are inside the airlock, and we need to close the door here, and we can then repressurize the airlock, and then get down into the ship. Being zero gravity, it does give a little bit of disorientation sometimes, because up isn't always up. And as we turn around here, you'll see that the floor is not quite where you'd expect it to be. Another touch that I really, really do like is that as the atmosphere comes back into the room here, so does the sound. Just listen, you'll hear the sound slowly picking up. And when you depressurize the room, you get the same effect, but in reverse, sound literally disappears. You do get some sound, but it's very muted, and that's because you're simply picking up the sound that's caused by the vibration of your suit. So now we're now going to open up the door and drop down into the ship. This door is below me, it's the other hatch from the airlock. And as we drop down, once we get through the hatch, gravity will once again take effect and we will drop down to the floor. Now if you're not correctly orientated here, you won't land on your feet. Instead you'll either land on your ass or on your face. And there we go. So we're going to shut the airlock. You can actually lock it as well, so I'm assuming that is if you want to prevent other players from uh, getting into your ship. So the ship is surprisingly large, there's a lot of different functionality on here. And again, as with the habitation module, you do need to repair it and keep it under check. So you can see there, I can open up the face visor as well, move, removing some of the uh, distortions you get from the graphical effect of the glass of the visor. And here is the ship's bridge or the helm, whatever you want to call it. And from here, you can interact with your environment, fly the ship and do whatever you need to do, including plotting a navigation route. Now, when you first get on board your ship, there isn't any power to the engines or the FTL drive, and you all need to come back here and power that up. I think I've hit the wrong button there, but not any problem. So the power supply screen will come down. And this is very much like the one we saw on the habitation module. It will show us uh, what we need to do in order to repair the ship, if anything. And in this case, we don't actually need to repair anything, but we do need to power on these solar panels. There's two of them and we can power on the capacitor as well. So the solar panels will generate the light and the more better your orientation towards the star, I do believe you'll get a better power generation there as well. And we then need to turn on these various modules. You can see the power output in the top left hand side of the screen and on the top right we'll see the power consumption and that should jump up in a bit once one of these modules actually comes on and there, there you go. So there's three ways of flying the ship in this game. One is to use the RCS system, that's the uh, 
reaction control system, and that's basically small thrusters that control the ship's attitude and translation. It doesn't allow for rapid movements or rapid maneuvers, but it does allow you to position your ship where you need to get it to, but it's not a travel system. There is the engines that we just switched on, and they do require fuel, but their functionality hasn't been enabled at this particular point. I'm not sure if that's going to be enabled once the game goes live, but like I say, they're not here yet. But the other way of navigating around the system, or the star system, is to use the uh, warp drive. And of course, that enables faster than light travel. Now, the warp core exists just below this deck, and you can interact with that. You do need warp cells to power it, there's a few actually in there. In fact, we'll go down and have a look exactly what that's like. These do get used up as you fly around the star system, so they will need a replacing eventually. I'm not sure again how you do that, but there are a few spares down in the cargo bay, which actually looks more like a hangar bay rather than a cargo bay, but we'll go and have a look at that in a while. As you saw when we boarded the ship, there is a vacuum and pressurization system in the game. There will also be a temperature and radiation systems introduced at a slightly later date. There's salvaging, which includes parts, resources, as well as for station modules, but you can't salvage for the ships just yet. Again, that's something that's coming later, but there is actually quite a lot in the game already. And in a while, we'll have a look at some asteroid EVA mining, and we won't quite get to the refining, I don't think, in this video, but we are going to head out towards that way. So again, we're looking at here what I feel is a very detailed maintenance system, or maintenance and repair system. So here is the warp engine, we do need to put something in here, I think it was already in here but I've removed it at some point during play, and let's have a look, see if I can find it here. Just need to press tab to bring up this radio manual here, or radio menu, and there it's the singularity cell detonator, so again it might sound a bit like a bomb but it's not, it's the device that runs the engine. So let's close that, and that will go in. And over here you can see the warp cells. And again, for some reason, I seem to have removed them whilst I was messing around playing. So we need to put them back in. Looks like the middle one might actually be uh, expired. So that one's a 68% uh, full. There's quite a bit in there. No idea how much is in the middle one there. And in the other one here, it's only got 28%. So enough to get us around at the moment, but obviously not enough to keep us going indefinitely. And over here seems to be some type of observation deck. We can have a look around us here and check out space. Now everything to do with controlling your ship and flying your ship is done from the helm that we saw very briefly early on. There's no actual in-game ship-to-ship combat at the moment. Again, it's work in progress, so some of that will be coming later. Back up to the helm then and we can have a look at the navigation menu. And again, you do that simply by directly interacting with the nav panel here. Uh, yep, just press F to interact. And once that's open, it will bring up a map of the system. Now, this is showing the uh, local planetary system rather than the entire star system. And as I rotate the map around, you will see the local star over there in the background. Now, plotting a route is very, very difficult. It's not something I'm going to go into in great detail here because, to be perfectly frank, I don't really understand it very well at this particular point but it's very much to do with uh, manipulating your orbit around a planetary body in order to navigate towards your chosen destination. Now, I'm trying to get towards a, an asteroid there. You can see the asteroid just orbiting around the planet I'm actually quite near to. And so I need to manipulate my orbit, which should then hopefully allow me to intersect the uh, asteroid or my chosen target. Now, this is very, very fiddly. The developers have put a video out on how to do all this, but I still struggle with it to be a bit honest, and I think over time it should come a bit easier with a bit more practice, and hopefully as more people start putting tutorials out there, that will also help. But we'll come back to this a little bit later on, and we can have a look at it in greater detail. So once you've selected your route, or plotted your course, and then chosen your time to burn for the engines, it's time to initiate the manoeuvre. And you just simply select the button on the screen there, say an initiate maneuver, and then you have to position your ship towards the chosen target. There's a little countdown there. Once it hits five seconds, you can press the left mouse button and you'll then head straight into warp. Now, travel within this game isn't a minor thing by any means. It all takes time. In some cases, it takes a significant amount of time. Now, as you saw on the nav menu, this was actually a relatively short journey. But you can see on the timer there, it's going to take a little over four minutes. So I'm going to put a cut there. 
and here we are after four minutes coming out of warp right and near the chosen destination and fortunately I did manage to plot the course correctly and we are right near the asteroid there you can see over on the right hand menu with the contacts menu that the asteroid is 5.2 kilometers away so I'm using the attitude control here I'm using the RCS system to orientate the ship and then go towards it and it actually took me a few more minutes to do that so the focus in this game is very very much about realism on many many levels and it does work it works very well in fact but it does mean it takes a lot of time to do anything of significance and it does mean that uh, it can be quite fiddly at times using the RCS system is not that easy by any means so it took me a few more minutes to navigate over to the asteroid here and I'm going to put another cut in there and now we are here I'm going to EVA directly down to that asteroid and see about doing a bit of drilling and mining down there and I believe that any resources we do gather can be brought back to the ship and refined. Fortunately, as you saw on the habitation module, there's a number of spacesuits, and the ship also has two. What I'm going to do here is change out my jetpack for one that's got more fuel and oxygen. Now you can use a recharge unit that's downstairs on the ship, but I'm going to leave my uh, backpack here for just a moment. And over to the left, you can see some weapons. There's some automatic uh, rifles there and there's also some ammo in the ammo drawer but I haven't used them but I will take one along with me as well as a few clips from the drawer plenty there nice to see so like I say you can uh, refill the uh, jetpack both its oxygen supply and its power supply down here there is a module down here you can depressurize the entire ship if you want but that's not something I want to do what I do want to do is get down to the cargo bay and this little lift will take us down to where I want to go. Nice, it's another airlock here. You can see the hatch above is locked and we're now in the cargo bay. And you can probably see why I call this a hangar as well. Now the ship has everything we need on board. There's some drills here and there's some power packs which are for the drill. One of them will go straight into the uh, drill itself and I'll take a few more to keep in my inventory for using later on. There are some oxygen canisters down below. I probably should have taken some of them, but not to worry. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to depressurize this hangar bay. So instead of spending time trying to repair that, I simply used the emergency release lock on the door at the back here, getting us out into space. This isn't a review of the game by any means, it's just a first look, one of many. I will be playing this game many times over the coming weeks and months I believe, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what content is added. It is early access, there are a few bugs, but nothing too significant that I've noticed. The only thing that I'm a little bit disappointed about is that right now, there's no access to any private servers. But as soon as that functionality does come available, I suspect it's going to be highly likely I'll be setting up my own dedicated server. So there, that's a look at Helion. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.